So you're working eight hours a day and you're getting, what, a hundred pounds. And then the other person works eight hours a day and he gets maybe 500 pounds. What's the difference there? Well, the skills, the education. So the more you invest in yourself, the more you're gonna get. But the funny thing about it is it, the why behind it. Why do you wanna get more? Because the stronger your why, the easier the how becomes. My guest today is Christy Ursu, or most of his friends call him Chris. We're gonna talk about his journey in the hospitality industry and also about something that he's very passionate about, which is mental health. Christy, or Chris, how most of the people here in Jersey know you. Uh, thank you for accepting my invitation to come into Hospitality Insights. And I know you're passionate about mental health. We're gonna have two different sections in today's podcast. So one, the hospitality, how basically you go in hospitality and what made you kind of like explore this mental health path and then how you want to change things in better. So first things first, how you ended up in Jersey? How was your beginning in hospitality? Good morning and thank you for having me. It's a true pleasure and honor to be here. Um, to begin with, how did I came to Jersey? Well, <clears throat> um, I taken a contract, um, which initially was a six months contract. And, uh, the moment I <laughs> arrived here, my perspective changed because of the beauty of the island, because of the beauty of the people. And, um, uh, I decided to stay. But have you worked in hospitality in Romania, uh, or it was first thing, you know, here in Jersey? No, no, no. I would, I worked in hospitality in Romania, um, I've actually trained uh, as a waiter with a private school in, uh, in Romania. <coughs> and I had, uh, I wouldn't say a, much, a, a lot of experience, but uh, I knew about hospitality and uh, I loved it. So when you came here, what was your, what was your first job? How, what, what was the first thing where you kind of like started working? Um, well, I came here as a, uh, with a supervisor contract and, uh, short after and very, very short after within two weeks, uh, our manager was forced to leave his job and, uh, the next person in line, <laughs> Inevitably. it was, it was, uh, it was obviously me. So the contract has changed from supervisor to, uh, to a manager, but due to unfortunate situation where the hotel was not very busy, um, I had to <laughs> um, step back and try to find something more engaging that was, uh, you know, because my, my spirit is, is <laughs> um, it's more active when there's more challenging, uh, there's more challenges uh, rather than sitting around not having yeah. anyone you don't to like attend comfort, to. Basically, yeah. you're just looking for something a bit more well, engaging. My, yeah, well, my my comfort zone is in chaos <laughs> rather than in you know a, a peaceful environment. So I'm more the person of um, uh, um, a, a good challenge rather than you know a sit back environment. So what was after that then? So you done your management management part. You like it didn't like it and then you move on to something else what was the next step in your career just because the lack of um activity i had to take a waiter's job in a more active environment so well, there's nothing wrong with it back to the basics <laughs> exactly exactly so that gave me it was actually a good opportunity for me to understand the local culture the um, local hospitality right not not for what I was used to back in Romania, uh, whether here things are slightly different and the approach of um, the whole industry is totally different. So um, yeah, it was a good uh, learning curve for me. Yeah, I guess, you know, you'll be more connected once you are at a wait waiter, waitress job because you talk to people a lot more 
you ought to be more engaged, you know, you get like your first impression, you know, directly from the customer instead of like kind of having a vague understanding. So yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's a good one. So what after, yeah, I know you are involved into, um, uh, you are collaborating with someone, uh, bringing uh, private bars, which is something like, I, I find it really exciting, you know, and, and really cool, you know, for people that, you know, are willing to, throw a nice party so that that's actually really interesting as well was that like way back way further in your career or you had like something in between between the way uh, the time when you were a waiter and what you kind of like doing now in partnership with somebody else it was never into my radar into my vision it was something that came um, along the path um, and I owe that to Simon, Simon Swar, who was one of my first mentors in hospitality um, in regards of bar work. Uh, at the time, I was working for Radisson and he came along to give us this bar training and I was immediately captivated and I, I found it so fascinated and the, his energy, you know, it's great. And I think he's one of the persons you should invite next he, he, he was the head of jersey hospitality like indeed previously indeed. yeah i kind of like well we bumped one in another just like to in events and he seemed like a cool guy and i'm sure like at some point we'll get him on uh yeah totally uh i don't know exactly i think he is he still doing something hospitality related i i know he's some sort of i can't remember he's representing some sort of charity here locally but I don't know whether he's still doing it. So was he some sort of like trainer? I don't really know his background, you see. Yeah. Well, um, he used to have this company um, where he would have uh, held these private events that I hold now. And actually that came from him. Um, uh, not only the idea, but also the confidence that I can do that, right? Because um, as we're about to talk later on, <laughs> yeah. you know, we are the sum of our... Uh, uh, beliefs so if you if you have the proper um, preparation and the right people around you uh, you'll find it much easier to do something that's uncomfortable right uh, but yeah no he's um, he's one of the people that I owe so much for what I am not just as a um, hospitality man right um, but for my perspective. Yeah, that, that's, that's cool. So, oh, hey, so we went pretty fast through this hospitality career <laughs> to this point because I know it's something probably, and I can feel it that's something temporarily for you. I mean, not that you don't enjoy what you're doing, but also you want to kind of like start doing something else. So it's something that I want to talk about. So how you <clears throat> ended up, you know, uh, starting your infancy your your next stage of your not necessarily career probably at this stage because it's kind of early but you are uh, into therapy into psychology and everything you know like well-being basically so how that started you know because it's not like every person you know thinks like oh you know what I'm, this is what i want to do you know and especially it's not like you are you know when you are let's say a teenager you have a thousand dreams you know and it's, it's a different kind of story but the older you get, the more uncomfortable you get to change. So how you ended up, you know, thinking, you know, this is it. This is kind of what interests me and I want to kind of pursue this. It's, it's, it's not really um, a pleasant story or a happy story. And I found out that from my own experience that <clears throat> we are more likely to change when an unfortunate situation happens in True. your life. Um, nothing comes from the comfort zone whenever you're on your way with your own job and everything goes, you know, as per planned or um, everything is basically in your comfort zone, right? You're, you're, you're more likely to not make any changes. But when something radical happens in your life that's that's when you um somehow consciously or unconsciously 
make a decision to to change. And for me, it was uh, this event of uh, my divorce who, you know, pushed me over my own limits and forced me to look at what's my part rather than pointing fingers, which it's always easy and we're all going there and say, well, it's his fault and it's her fault and uh, I feel this because you did that. And the moment you, you do that, I realize that it's, it's, it's actually the moment you give your power away. And I see that happening on a daily basis, not only in my personal life, but in my professional life where I work with various uh, uh, people from various backgrounds and uh, you know it, it, it's so easy now to recognize that certain people has certain insecurities and what that does you know makes you point fingers at others because it's so much easier to blame someone else for what you feel uh, rather than Take a look at yourself and see what you what have you done to create that, to bring that into your life, and what can you actually do to change the outcome of your own reality. I think it's even more powerful when <clears throat> when you get drawn into whether a profession, whether something that you want to change in world in, in the world, you know, with your own story. So when everything starts there, I think you understand it better. So. Yeah, that's definitely something that goes, must be a really strong feeling whenever you kind of like talk about it and I can see you being passionate about it. But do you have people that like mentors or who's kind of like, where do you get all these, uh, I don't know, uh, finding your way? How, how was it that you find your way? Was it on your own? Was it that you had some sort of mentor, some sort of like therapist or is something that, yeah, you just done it on your own basically? For me, it, it, it started on my own. I had this urge of starting meditating without even knowing the benefits of it, without knowing anything about meditation or without anyone telling me I should try meditation. It was just a, a natural uh, thing. Just one night, I, I just literally couldn't sleep, right? So I was browsing like I was always doing right because we are all up we are all we are all sorry um, um, the sum of our habits so one of my habits were to put myself asleep while browsing on scrolling on Facebook or Instagram or whatever uh, and I came up this uh, um, breathing technique and I was like, well, let me just give it a try. I've, I've always been curious, right, about new things. So I started doing that meditation that night and I was like feeling so different, right? It was something about it. And the moment I separated myself from the environment, because the environment is it's actually one of the most important things that people tend to overlook, um, and the moment I put myself in a new environment, having, creating a new feeling and new thoughts actually made me, you know, pursue that feeling, that unknown, that new feeling more and more. And so I was giving it, a, you know, allocating basically a lot more time to do that. And then I came across an ad on Facebook again about a book. And, you know, it, it had such a catchy uh, title that it, it was called, it, it is called um, The Magic of Separation. And for me at the time, I was crossing this divorce and you know, it made so much sense in my mind, the title, not, not even knowing <clears throat> what the book is about. And I was like, you know what, why not just order it? Go, yeah. yeah, just order it. 
So I wrote the book. The book arrived. Obviously, I wasn't a reader at the time. Um, and so I've just put it there and it just sat there, you know. And, and then another night I was like, why shouldn't I just give it a go, see, see what it is about? And so I started started um, reading that book and uh, the next thing I know is half six in the morning, me finishing the book um, with a total emotional, different emotional state. And I was like, wow, this I is couldn't, powerful. I, yeah, exactly. I, I couldn't believe it. It, it was actually uh, a, a psychologist written book about his own story. And I, I have related to that so much to such a deep level that I was like, oh my God, if that's how reading feels, right? <laughs> why haven't I yeah. gone into it earlier? <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> and from that point on, I was like sold. Uh, I was always the... Um, the curious person about, you know, mental health and how how can one control his thoughts, his mind, his actions in order to <clears throat> become what you actually want to become. And um, I went on a, um, on a training in 2017 on a personal development training, um, it, which was designed around some selling Right, I, I was with a company, and you know, you were meant to do some sales and grow your network, and it was nothing that I would, you know, <laughs> pursue at this moment. But at the time, it made sense for me. So the most, uh, the most important thing that I've taken from that company. Uh, have been these trainings and the people that I uh, I still follow these days and um, for me tasting you know the transition from an environment to a different environment because that's what it does when you when you go to a training or personal development uh, training for that that takes several days you know you you put yourself in a very different environment and then you're firing and wiring different thoughts because there's all, all, all these different people with all these different mentalities where your perspective changes and you see another possibilities, another opportunities, another ways, other ways to, to do things that you, you never thought before. So then it, that's why learning is creating <laughs> um, new um, neurological paths. And <clears throat> that's where, you know, um, your comfort zone actually disappears and you know you you find yourself in the more challenging and uncomfortable situations and you can never grow from a from a point of um security or comfort because that's 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 nothing that will challenge you so the moment you are uncomfortable that's the moment you actually um um more inclined to absorb a new information to take it a different action so for, for me that is being more uncomfortable means i am where i need to be yeah you are more alive i would say yeah exactly exactly <laughs> no, that kind of makes sense but then so you want to bring this whole not necessarily experience you know but yeah it's kind of like an experience to the hospitality industry what made you kind of like think that, you know, this industry needs it? Like, was it like your experience throughout the years that you could see that, you know, people need it? I mean, probably we all need it to a certain extent. Uh, I still believe, you know, that certain things, you know, get confused sometimes mental health with like day to day issues. So it's not like everybody kind of suffers from it, but being a better version of yourself, I think that's definitely something that we can all do and we can all improve on. But how do you see that transition into the hospitality industry? Because you have an ambition, you know, of kind of like making this better because you've seen things along the way. Uh, you've seen, you know, how how beneficial this could be for for the hospitality, for the hospitality industry. 
what's your not necessarily your plan but how you decided you know that this is something that you know it should be implemented in the hospitality industry that they need it probably that it needs it more than ever before we actually go and talk about mental health um, how we can implement that into into the hospitality we need to know what mental health is so to give you a, a perspective right um mental health is like the hardware of a computer right the motherboard of a, a computer you cannot run without you, you cannot run your laptop without the motherboard so uh mental health it's more like as simon Sinek says um your mental fitness right you go to the gym you want to get fitter um, you work out and you know you just hope that someday you will get in shape well there's not just a hope there there is action yeah indeed there is action but it's a, a demonstrated fact that if you go five days a week to the gym i don't know what's the day but the day will come when you will get the results you're looking after your body will become fit it's the same with your mental uh, health which is mental fitness so the mental fitness is actually the way you um, create your day-to-day -day, um, activities minds and uh, thoughts and states states of being emotions so if you think if if you for instance think about your daily routine right you wake up in the morning and you do your own routine for instance you go to the bathroom you have your coffee you check your facebook check your whatsapp um, then you rush to go to work and then from work you rush to go home um, and you're seeing the same people you're doing the same things you can't say you have changed anything during that day correct but then again if you start your day and then you are aware of any emotions that people or environments you're going to see that day are going to create in your mind in your uh, in your life um, the more you are aware of it the more control you can gain over your reactions over your uh, facts over your your deeds and the more you're going to be able to create the states that you want the best um, the more you're going to be in control of your own of your own life so um how can you do that in in a work environment for instance like hospitality which is a very stressful um, um environment right is if you only allow yourself to take you know a short break a two minutes break and practice a, a breath work meditation for instance you just go to the bathroom or you just go um, I don't know to a private place and you just close your eyes and sit there with yourself and breathe in for four breathe out for four that will create your nerve will cause your nervous system to calm down and I do that I do that and um uh, periodically and I find myself you know um, doing things or saying things out loud like <laughs> I did uh, the other day when uh, it was an, an awkward situation and then I was like thinking out loud but I was trying to you know um, in your mind you you were kind of like in your own thoughts you exactly. thought that was in your mind yeah, exactly. but it wasn't <laughs> and then I was uh, I was saying um uh, out of this situation um out of this situation only good will come and then the person was looking at me and i was like yeah never mind i was, <laughs> I was doing that for myself right uh it, and it happens the same with um with this with the breath work that i do and uh you know i go sometimes like <sighs> And I do that repeatedly. And then there's another person next to me and he was like, are you all right? And I'm like, yeah, I'm just, you know. <laughs> I'm <trying>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
so I, I, um, going back to your question, I think, uh, I think knowing more of yourself, um, it's actually um, beneficial for everyone, not only for yourself. Yeah, that that's yeah, that's that's totally right. I, I can't agree more with with this. But then we were also talking. So we've met like twice till now because you are yes. a fan of the podcast, and yes. we were like, yeah, you are, you'd be such a great guest because you have a different perspective. Because uh, I do have chefs, I, I'm gonna have like hotel managers and all sorts of people. But I'm sure that it's not gonna be very very soon that I'm gonna get someone that has the same perspective as you do. Which is good because that's what we need. We need variety. We need people to help in all sorts of ways, not just by cooking, not just by being a good waiter. We need, you know, people from helping from this perspective. But I know when we met last time, you were mentioning to me, you know, that the importance, the importance of the HR department. Now, how is the HR department helping a business, not necessarily just in hospitality, how can they help? Should people approach it? How should they approach it? What should be the relationship between the HR department and the employee, basically? How, how do you see that uh, working? From my personal experience and from what I've um, seen successful people talking around the world, like Gary Vaynerchuk, you mentioned you're, you're a big fan of him. Um, HR, it's, if you like, the heart of any business. And I, I think people disregard the HR department so much and they think of it like just, you know, a human resources department where they uh, interview people and, uh, you know, they say yes or no to the candidates and you know that's pretty much it but in fact these people are so much more than that they are so well trained and then they have so many tools to give to any employee at different times so for instance um you have an argument with um, a chef or a waiter or a barman or and then you don't know what to do and you're not confident enough to approach the situation yourself. And then you think the next best solution next, next best solution is to go to the HR department. But then again, you think, so why I'm mentioning that is because I've been there myself. So I was thinking going to HR department, but then again, I was feeling guilty if I was to go to HR department because I would put the other person, you know, on on target, right, uh, in, a, in a bad position. And then I wouldn't know if he would lose the job or not. So what's the, what's the alternative then? Um, do I approach it myself or how, how, how should I manage it? So what I did, I, I went to the uh, HR department and I was talking to, to the lady at the time. And I've not only found to be encouraged to approach the situation myself but it was more empowering to to see that actually my first instinct which was to approach the situation myself was actually right right so they have this power of guidance if you like um, they know about the emotions they know about the human brain uh, they go to different psychological trainings and they will know how to help you better than anyone else you would go within the company so they they create if you like the culture in the company but that is a very difficult thing to do because <laughs> a company's culture it's essentially everything it, it, it should stand on your beliefs and your why your, why did you start a business in the first place, right? So if you if you don't have such a such a person um, within your company, you definitely should get one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as you said at the beginning, you know, we we most people think you know that HR is there just to employ people, make sure that they you know when people get fired, basically, or not necessarily fired, or they leave, they process the back end of that, and then they look for other people. They basically like the hiring is basically the 
biggest job ever for HR, but I don't think his AI is necessarily true. And the more I sit next to, uh, in my in my working place, I'm kind of like next to the HR team. I see that they are involved in so much more. And I never really knew, I was kind of like disconnected from, from whatever they do. And I realized that, wow, there's so much more to it. And yeah, uh, for people that, you know, have issues and they don't know how to approach it, I think that, yeah, that's HR job to kind of guide them. So yeah, definitely. It's not only their job, but it, uh, I mean, I wouldn't put it uh, that much on them because as I said, we are emotional creatures and there's different stages in our lives where we are or we are not confident enough to talk about various things, although they may be very, very open and very sincere in the in, um, in an approach. For instance, um, the HR department, uh, department tells you that if there's any issues at all, come and see me and we can talk it through. I mean, I'm here to help. I'm here to guide. If I can help, by all means, come and see me. But that doesn't mean necessarily that, you know, we are always open to that. So I, I've learned that on my own, <laughs> on my own, um, in so many cases that I, I, I felt the urge to talk to someone, but it wasn't necessarily the person who's told me, you know, I'm here if you need me, the person that I went to, because we are all ready for our teachers when we are ready you know we we don't we don't just decide this is the moment you 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 have the feeling within you that this is actually the right time or he's the the right person for me to talk to for people that want to explore these on their own i mean you kind of like started from a book more or less for people True. that want to kind of explore these on their own and then be like you know what i feel like this is a great idea how do I start? What are the books? What are the steps they need to follow? Like to basically the like make a better version of this themselves, uh, find their real uh, why basically, what they do, what they do and why they do what they do. Uh, basically like how they find a purpose. What are, let's say two, three, one book, whatever that you can recommend to people, you know, to explore this and see if it's for, for them. Not everybody will will watch this podcast and think like, yeah, it's for me. Some of them will be like, you know what, I'm fine. I don't care about this. Which, yeah, if people can manage on their own, is absolutely fine. And if they're really strong and probably already built for life in general, that's absolutely fine. But for people that want to get more, what, what books would you recommend? Expand their um, uh, perspective, yes. Um it's not something that I recommend. I, I would say um, more or less if you feel the urge to look for a better version of yourself, to be in control of your emotions, being wow. more res um, responsive and more active rather than reactive. Um, it's, it, it's just going to call you. It's not a right moment. It's not something you. Um, it's not something you chase, if you like. It for me at least, you know, it was the realization of the fact that what I did and what was my um, what was my part that I was playing. Um, it, it made me, you know, look at it because you're never going to look at yourself and start not blaming, but, you know, take responsibilities unless you are either in a very difficult situation or you truly, truly want to create a change in your life. So Dr. Joe Dispenza says um, we're living in, um, in this world full of information where it's available everywhere. So living with so much information that, you know, uh, doubles every day, which is crazy. If you think about it, the amount of information that go that is out there, you know, 
um, living in a world where this information is so accessible to everyone, ignorance is just a choice. You can start anywhere, anywhere you feel. It doesn't have to be a book. It doesn't have to be a video. It doesn't have to be um, an audio book or finding a mentor or seeking a therapist or whatever. Do whatever feels right for you in that in that moment, right? So I've started basically with meditation and then with reading and then um, with some courses. And from there, I went to therapy. Um, I've changed the kind of therapy that I, that I was taking. And now I'm a different program. I'm going in retreats and, you know, I'm not saying I'm this, you know, perfect per person, not at all. I mean, uh, but I'm tr what I'm doing is I'm trying to create different patterns, different neuro neurological patterns in my brain, uh, by changing certain habits, um, and, you know, certain sets of beliefs and it works for me so yeah. far. But that's the um, most important thing, you know? Exactly. Because so. you, you, if you think about it, you, you cannot help others if you're not helping yourself first. So Oprah has this beautiful saying where, uh, you know, she says, uh, people back in the day used to tell me, oh, she's so full of herself, she's so full of herself. And now... You know, when when tell when someone tells you you're so full of yourself, you like feel offended. But now she's like, I feel so blessed when people are telling like I'm full of myself. Yes, because I'm full of myself, and now I can overflow, and all this overflow can go to these other people. So in order for you to actually be able to help others, you need to help yourself first. And the uh, the kind of help you need. It's totally up to you. Mentors, you know, you can have a mentor, you know, that's, for example, Oprah, um, just like the example, you know, is international, you can follow, you can uh, kind of like get inside, get information. Do you have a mentor? Do you have mentors? Do you, how do you perceive this? Because uh, you were mentioning Simon for your first part of your career, mm -hmm. but I guess your your view in terms of mentors must have changed because you kind of, you just move into a different direction now. Exactly. You're not that hugely interested on like bar related stuff yeah. or hospitality per se. So what are your mentors now in this stage? Yeah, true. I mean, depending on your interest, your mentors will change. And for me, I couldn't say I have one mentor. I mean, I have so many mentors <laughs> on different... I don't think there's anything wrong with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, because um, if you think about it, um, there's different people that you interact with and we are influenced by not only the people we're surrounding ourselves with, but the people they are being surrounded by, right? So the moment I found that out, uh, I was like, oh my God, how can I surround myself with different people? People not that not only that has a different perspective, but that has a healthier perspective of life. And the moment I, I've realized that, I've somehow stopped hanging around with people that didn't create it, the outcome that I was looking for and this is no offense to anyone watching <laughs> um, instead of me deleting you know friendships on Facebook or uh, blocking numbers or that I've just stopped and the moment the, the the beautiful thing about it is you when you stop contacting people you realize how much you've actually, invested in something that you know it wasn't meant to be for you but it felt familiar in the same time i've started to create my own entourage if you like um, online and for instance now jay shetty is my 
best friend, but he doesn't know it yet. <laughs> um, people from Romania, mentors from Romania, they're my best friends and uh, they don't know it yet. <laughs> but um, it's funny because the moment you, you, you start looking outside of your inner circle, you start finding people that at that moment becomes, or you think they are unreachable, right? And I give you this example where um, I was watching a, a podcast and I've seen, I've discovered this lady who's um, a next TV presenter. Um, and now she's a trained therapist. Uh, and I was thinking like, how, how, how is this connection so powerful? Like, why, what, what's the, what's, What's the thing that actually drones me towards her, right? So I was being so fascinated by not only what she said, as she was saying, but for um, about her her own story, her own path, and her own ways. And I've I've been so convinced that her path and her story was real right i there was no doubt in my mind that was that wasn't real and i've then decided when she was actually uh, saying that the best key the best way or the fastest way right to become a better version of yourself to heal your childhood traumas to um, gain a different perspective is to find a good therapist and that was my starting point with the therapy. And so I decided, okay, I'm going to see a therapist. How do, you, how do you find a therapist for your own kind of like mind? How do you find it for like other people? What, what would you recommend, you know, to look for? You, I don't think you find, I mean, you can't define a good therapist. It's a, a good therapist is someone that, you know, you resonate with. It's not necessarily... So just because it's good for you doesn't mean it's good for me. Exactly, exactly. Because it's... And it might, it's nothing wrong with the therapist. It's just that, you know, we just don't connect. Exactly. Okay. So okay. the yeah. moment you, you connect, the mo because what you do is you trust someone to be your guide, to be um, your door opener, right? To, to show you new paths, new ways of thinking and how you actually can change uh, yourself. Because what a therapist is not, <laughs> <laughs> is a healer. So he's not going to, he's never going to change your life. Although I've used that phrase so many times, not only with my uh, past therapist, but with my current one. And I was like, oh, you literally changed my life because you did that and it was like no i haven't you did you know they you are the there in the war. Yeah, exactly. exactly they they are there to to guide you but they're not they are not there to do the work for you so yeah and um, the funny thing about my current therapist it's that she is the lady that i was watching on that podcast and at that time she seemed so far out like how am I ever going to connect with that person, right? So because the emotion was so intense and had this weight, because the more, the, the heavier, if you like, the emotion is, the more inclined you are to do something about it, right? So what I did first, I was going on social media and start following her. And she's became she became my my best friend <laughs> without her actually knowing it. So I've started not only to not only research uh, her work, but um, started to pay close attention to what she was writing about, um, her own story, her, um, her own path and what she did in order to come from, from such a dark place to this beautiful person that she is today. So I've started to make incremental changes here and there, small changes at a time. And obviously it, it's, it's not a linear process. And this is something that 
<sighs> I cannot stress enough for people to understand nothing it's a linear process nothing is it's a straight path people tend to to say um well i've tried therapy you know it's 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 not for me well the reason they say that is because their their expectation behind that is so i'm going to go to a therapist and within a month or two he's going to heal me right? I'm going to be better. It's not like you're going to an orthoped when you break your leg and you you have this gypsum and, you know, you have to uh, have your bone secured there for like 30 or 40 days and then you're all healed, right? No. <laughs> it, doesn't <laughs> <It's>, <work. laughs> it doesn't work that way. I'm telling you because I'm now in my second year of therapy and I'm not, I'm not saying that, you know, you should be uh, going for years and years and years, uh, it, it, it's only up to you. My purpose now with the therapy is not to um, find, you know, that pill that will cure me or heal me or heal my traumas, my childhood traumas uh, overnight. No, it's rather the process. So what I find more and more interesting is that on a daily basis, I see people being motivated by the end goal, right? Rather than falling, falling in love with the process. And that for me is fascinating because the more I see my process, the more I look into my own process, the more I fall in love with the incremental changes that I've done and I've, uh, the, the, the steps that I've taken um, so far. And I'm so far off from where I want to go. Uh, but I, 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 I truly, truly, truly believe that falling in love with the process is what actually success is, you know, because let's say your, your goal is to buy this yacht or this house or this whatever, right? And the moment you, you place your happiness into that point, right? Anything in the middle can be anything, mm -hmm. right? You could be miserable, you could hurt people, or you can be unhappy, or you could be stressed. And what's the point when you get to that destination? You're gonna be you're gonna feel joy <clears throat> for a short period of time, and then what? Yeah, that's a really interesting perspective. So, talking about progress, talking about you know everything was positive till now let's be honest even if you started from something bad you made it in a way that you know now everything in your life even if you have people you had people that you know were not that were not aligned with your new kind of like ideas you try to not talk to them which is or not not basically having them in your life it's, it's made you probably a better person but what keeps you motivated you know to do what you're doing to continue doing um, my son is the ultimate motivation for myself and um, that comes from a very insecure child that I was and <clears throat> when I say that is it's a long very long story um, as it is the case so with everyone else better, basically for your son is that what what at the ultimate goal is like making sure like he's got he's got someone to look uh, up and be like this is my father you know I wanna yeah he's my he's the inspiration is that like the goal in a way uh, sort of I, I mean it's part of but I think I use that as a fuel for now but I know down deep is something more than that. Um, as I was saying earlier, you cannot help others unless you help yourself. True. So it's it's a very simple analogy, right? You you can't swim and then your baby falls into the pool um, and your primal instinct is to jump into the pool and save him, right? But if you're not a swimmer, you, you don't know how to swim, then you know what's the outcome. You're going to drown together, right? So how can you be prepared? That's my motivation. I want to be prepared. I was never, ever, ever into education. I was a bad 
student when I was in school. I was doing I'm like guilty for that myself. So <laughs> I, I was seeing writing or reading like a punishment, like a work, like such a heavy, you know, rock on my shoulders. And I was like, I don't like it. I don't want to do it. But now everything flipped when I've realized how actually education can change your life and not only your life but the people around you right because um the last thing i would encourage someone to do is to just be laid back the moment you are like just going to work too comfortable take the check you know, at the end of the month and then go on holidays and then watch some Netflix. And then, I mean, it's fine if that's what you want to do, you know, it's fine. But think about it for a second. Close your eyes and see yourself in five years. Not changing anything. I mean, nothing, literally nothing about who you are, what you do, the way you think, the way you behave, right? Change nothing about it. And see yourself in five years. And if that person in five years, it's not the person you want to be, uh, you don't really have a choice there, do you? And you, you got to make a choice. You got to make a choice. Either if it's in a healthy environment or if you're into a dysfunctional environment or if you're in a, a difficult situation, you got to make a choice. Do I want to be that person? Do I truly want to be that person? And the, the beauty of it is that we have this choice every single day, you know. At the end of the year, people are like, okay, new year, new me. <laughs> uh, is it yeah. really? You're doing something for a couple of days and then you're like, ah, forget about it. Yeah, I never really believed in these kind of statement, statements just because uh, if you want to change something, you change in December. You know, I want to think, oh, in January, I'm going to do it. Yes, uh, I'm going to yeah. start tomorrow. I'm going to start on Monday. I'm going to start... Today is the day. <laughs> exactly. And the moment you 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 decided that you, you, you want to make a change, everything changes. The way you look at life for instance people tends to tends to say uh more like this happens to me and everything happens to me and everything you know doesn't work for me um i'm not good enough i'm not bad the more you look at life happening to you the more you're going to be in the victim mode and when you're in victim mode you're in survival and when you're in survival you're in a freeze of fight uh, flight or fright flight or fight mode right so there's nothing you can uh, you can grow there it's like um, you're putting an oak tree seed into a, a flower pot hmm. it's not going to grow at its full potential never ever ever right so that's why the environment is also important um, not only what you do but the environment you place yourself in so the more you look at life happening for you and not to you the more you're going to be willing to accept a different a, a difficult situation and i i'll give you an example i was taking a test a couple of months ago and i i failed it and i was like how can that be how can you fail me for such a small little thing you know it's not right let me tell <laughs> everyone about it oh it's your fault and then i i stopped and i was like why why am I having this reaction, you know? So the moment you stop in a difficult situation and you ask yourself, why? What's the reason? What, what was the trigger behind it? What was the um, unmet need that was behind it? And you, you, you start, you know, spreading it out on a, on a piece of paper. You will get to a point that it's actually, you know, your programs from the childhood where for instance <clears throat> what was the uh, the lowest degree you could have 
you could get in the in school in our Romanian system. I think it was two. I think the lowest probably was it. Yeah. Was it not one? I don't think I never got like well. So I never just, seen one, but probably yeah. You you could technically get one, but it was just like I think it was just more of a like okay, we'll keep it with two. But yeah, technically you could go to one, but. So, for instance, uh, for your audience to understand our system, we were our grades were from one to ten, yeah. right? Uh, one was the whereas ten was the best. Um, well, you could have got one for what? Well, when it comes to the test, yeah, co- yeah, stuff like that. I Copy. guess for a test, you know, if you give. If you give a blank, exactly. a blank paper, so, you know, then you obviously know it's nothing there. Then what, what else can can you get? Yeah. But yeah, as I said, you know, I, most of the times I've seen two just because it was like the, the professor was like, you know, uh, you get one by what you've done and I give you another one for, from me, you know. Exactly. They, they would go as low as two, but yeah. One, yeah, you could get one through. So you get one for copying, right? So what do you learn from that? Oh, working, working with someone, right, in collaboration is not good. Growing up with you knowing that, writes a program in your mind, collaboration is not good. So we are being thought of being individual rather than collaborating with others. Do you know any company in this world that has made it with only one single person. Yeah, fair. That's true. Yeah. So how can we expect, you know, our children or ourselves to perform at our best in a community um, based society, right? You can't make good things on your own. Well, you can go to, to a degree, I guess. Yeah, to a point. Exactly. But then again, if you want to grow, you're limited you're limited by you know yeah you don't have enough enough resources you need to think about collaborating finding other people you know just bringing fresh minds exactly yeah. exactly so with with learning is like the subway message always goes when the doors are opening please mind the gap <laughs> right and I found that in, in, in this course of uh, Laurent, um, where he says, mind the gap. And I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> so imagine yourself being in this po- point now and you want to become, I don't know, a teacher or a mentor like I want to be or a therapist or whatever. You, you are a chef like you were, for instance. Yeah, you yeah. were a chef and you wanted to become a videographer. What was, the, what was the thing that was missing? You had the passion, you had the wish, you had the uh, ambition. What was, what was the gap for you? Oh, you mean the skills, like how? Exactly. Yeah, so that, yeah, obviously that required like learning a whole new there we career go. in a way from scratch. Education. Which, yeah, totally. So yeah. you got to educate yourself on how to do things you want to do in the yeah. future, right? So if you if you if you don't take the first step, how are you ever going to make any changes? Oh, totally, yeah. You need to start and you get we're going back to incremental changes. Exactly. Exactly. Watching a ton of videos on YouTube Putting them, put that, putting that in practice, it doesn't work. Going back to it, you know, because I'm more of like self-taught in whatever I'm doing. Yeah. So it makes it even probably more complicated. But I started kind of like failing with my own kind of actions. So learning from that is painful, but in the same time is more impactful because I know I'm not going to do it next time. <laughs> and how rewarding is that for you to actually see the, the changes that you made and how they helped you to get what you wanted because we don't necessarily want the same thing in this world right oh, you yeah. want to be a videographer someone wants to be a billionaire other one uh, someone wants to be a hairdresser and so on so the moment you the more you 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 learn towards your goal the happier you are and the 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 more um, aware you are of your skills the more empowered you feel about you know taking different actions I'm, I know what I want and I'm, 
I'm kind of pursuing it, you know, without kind of like crying, pointing fingers and all that. It doesn't help. That is one trait of yours that actually draw me towards you. Because the moment I've seen it, uh, I've seen your um, your first po podcast, I was like, I need to talk to this person. <laughs> I don't know why I felt the urge. And I, that was the moment when um, I have sent you the message. And I wanted to sincerely congratulate you. I wasn't thinking about me being on your podcast at all. I was like, you know, I'm, I find this extraordinary. And the, the reason I'm doing that is because I know the importance of acceptance, of um, approval, right? I see that on a daily basis, not only at work, but in my personal life as well, how important it is and how good, um, how much confidence can that create in society in general? So for instance, in, in hospitality industry, I see the importance of, appraisal right of recognizing one's um efforts to you know enlighten the person to keep that spark alive so that's why i'm i'm always paying attention to the people i interact with and instead of looking at what they do wrong who didn't wash the coffee machine, who left this to here, who uh, put that over there. Instead of doing that, and that is actually something that I was doing constantly, right? Throughout my, <laughs> my career, I was always looking for um, a fault, right? I've now changed to see what are they actually doing good and how can I bring that? How can I bring that up? For them to actually recognize right and it's not um because it's a very fine line to go all positive right um versus then being all negative oh you did this you did that you should have done this way you should have done that way or my way is the best way or you know um and going to oh well done well done you you've done you've done that so good i mean you're incredible you're no it's a fine balance but I think we we lack the um, awareness of importance of others' approvals, right? Because we need approval. We need to feel recognized. We need to uh, be feel accepted, not only in our community, but in our workspace as well. So the more you do that for others, the easier it will become for others to accept and approve of yourself. So professionally, mm -hmm. going back to going back to it, uh, what's what's your plan for the coming years, whether short term, uh, mid and uh, long? Do you have something in mind? I have a lot in my mind, actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'm. My plan has actually started developing and. It was a difficult change for me, unlike you being such an open and um, go for go for yeah, it person. It's not for everybody, yeah. Totally. Exactly. I was uh, I was very very hard to, to be convinced that you can actually make more, as in term in term of um, financial, while you're doing less. For me, that was just mind blowing. How, how, what do you mean by that? Because I've been taught the harder you work, the more you're gonna get, right? And I was like, how can I do that? So I followed this course and I was like blown away by its content. And um, the most important thing I've learned from there is not the amount of time, it's not, we are not being paid for the time at work, but we are being paid by the value we bring. Because we always say like, um, for instance, if you ask someone, uh, why do you only make that much? Well, that's all the company pays. Mm, is it really? Uh, don't you have people who wins, who gets 10 times more in the same company? Well, yeah, but you know, they are general managers or they are this and that, so there is people 
within the company that are getting more in the same time, right? So you're working eight hours a day and you're getting, what, a hundred pounds. And then the other person works eight hours a day and he gets maybe 500 pounds. What's the difference there? Well, the skills, the education. So the more you invest in yourself, the more you're going to get. But the funny thing about it is it, the why behind it. Why do you want to get more? Because the stronger your why, the easier the how becomes. And that for me was like, <laughs> and I was like, okay, so how can I define my why? Right. And then I went back to basics and it, it's a constant thing. So for me, it's not like, uh, it, it's not like a finite, finite um, goal or finite um time frame that I would like to go from here to here, right? Rather than having a finite mindset, like Simon Sinek says, right? Um, I would like to play the game of infinite game. So what so that this means... Is the plan. <laughs> well, yes, basically, the plan is to have this mentality mm. where everything is infinite, nothing is finite, right? Um, because... I've realized not only the amount of stress that goes off the shoulders the, mo the, the moment you play the infinite game, right? Um, but the joy, the amount of, um, of time you have for yourself. So for instance, I've created um, for myself such a structure that I was never... Um, thought about or believed it would be uh, possible so I am now traveling and having two months of holiday each year so every three months I'm going away for like two two and a half weeks and that is not non-negotiable <laughs> regardless the company I'm going to work with that is non-negotiable so that is my time for my son, myself, my growth. What I do while I'm performing with the company that I'm working with, I'm giving 110%. And that's another thing. You must create more value in order for you to become more valuable. I hear this so often that they pay me this and this, so I'm only going to be doing this. The moment you say that, the moment you um, have this, this um, um, mentality, that's the moment when you, you're actually sabotaging your own self. Because people are going to see you for the value you bring. They're not going to memorize, they're not going to remember what you, th what you said but they will remember the way you made them feel. And the way you made them feel, it's through your ability um, or uh, work ethic, right? In the hospitality industry, especially, um, that they're gonna remember you. So you've been a good worker, they're gonna be remember you being a good worker. Oh, well, Chris was the, the guy who was doing, you know, everything and anything and he wouldn't mind. Or Chris was this, bitchy person where you know mm -hmm. you would have asked him to do something he would have rolled his eyes and you know that's actually a key a starting key for each and every one of us thinking how can i become more valuable and then for the company after that kind of try to get the reward everything everything will come right back at you i'm a strong believer not only a believer, but I'm um, leading my life, if you like, um, based on one single thing. I want to create my own karma. I'm not going to put anything out there that I don't wish it to come back to me. So if I'm trying to create something, it has to be something 
um, in alignment with my values and something that I know at some point in my life, it will come back to me. So it's as simple as that. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's a nice structure of your like, what you want to do in the future is basically kind of continue the same way, but yeah, keeping aligned with your values. Yeah, that makes sense. And then what a, only good can happen, I guess, you know. Exactly. <laughs> kind of continue. To summarize this, I guess, you know, that's that's what I get. Yeah. Exactly, is... because I've, 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 I've gone past those social labels where, you know, you're a manager or you're a general manager or you're a director, you're a CEO, CFO, whatever, right? Or a doctor. And the person who helped me see through that was my current therapist uh, therapist that I went on this retreat with. And I felt such a, an imposter. You know, there's this imposter syndrome mm. that we all have at a certain point where I was surrounded by doctors, lawyers, uh, professors, <laughs> uh, scientists. And you feel like, why am I doing this? And I'm here? like... <laughs> Oh, exactly. What am I doing here? I don't belong here. So the, the next thing I do is I tell my therapist that this is what I feel. And she was like breaking it all down for me to see that to behind secure, all right? these, exactly, behind all these labels that I've attributed to each and every one of this person, they were only people. And then in the end, you know, because they were there, they wanted something change in their life. Exactly. So it's not like they were there to teach. Yeah, to that exactly. Information. Exactly. So whether a different level, you know, they or not, you know, they still wanted to find themselves, get a yeah. better version of the, themselves and so on. So you were basically on the same page, but you just couldn't see it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I, I, that's why I'm saying when, you, when you've when asked me about my, my, my future plans, I'm not, I'm not going to tell you I want to become this... Uh, um, influencer, this um, guru, or this therapist, or this mentor, or this. I want to. I want to stay in the field of neuroscience and psychology because that's what actually passions me a lot these days, and I. I feel it's a. It's a great. Um, it's actually the best way to, um, not only help yourself but help others. So let's say you have the power, yeah, here, whether in Jersey, in Romania, in the world, yeah, what would be the first two, three, whatever things, you know, that you would change to make people better, to make, like, to be better in their mind, to basically this uh, mental health, you know, to go in the right direction? What would you change? Change the environment. And the reason I'm saying that is um, it's a very simple analogy, um, as I said earlier on with the uh, uh, oak tree seed, put it oh. in the plant, it will only grow so much. And another more realistic vis uh, vision of it is these days online goes a um, worldwide known musician, uh, a violinist. And he's shows are fully booked every time anywhere in the world he's performing people are crazy to go see it right and they pay from 100 to 150 dollars per ticket it's a show of 45 minutes and he decides to go to new york subway to perform the same concert for the same amount of time to see how much money he can he can raise there, right? So he starts playing for the 45 minutes. Some people are just passing by, not even caring. Some are stopping or clapping. Some are throwing a dollar or two in there. And at the end of the 45 minutes, he gathers the amount of $30. So what's different? Environment, the, yeah. The environment. So the way to change the environment for me, what I would suggest, right, is not actually changing the people, not actually, um, I don't like this job, um, I'm going to change it. I don't like this person, I'm going to change it. I don't like this thing, I'm going to change it, right? But bring more awareness into the management. 
and how you actually train the management to take that down into the lower level. If the management don't work with themselves, don't know themselves, cannot contain the people they work with, right? They will never going to be able to empower. They are never going to be able to deal with various emotions at different stages, right? So it's not only managing numbers, you know, because managing people is very, very different, very, very difficult. So I, I would suggest, you know, a proper approach towards how can you manage yourself first? Because if you don't know how to manage yourself first, your emotions, your reactions, your thoughts, your ways, you're not going to be able to manage a team. So we just say that uh, whenever you know someone steps into a position, you know, manage management position, apart from doing all sorts of like courses that are made basically to make the conf- company profitable would be something good to do a bit more about like knowing people, uh, knowing how to deal with people with at certain levels, which I think there is is part of the management course if you say you go like specifically to do it. But obviously hospitality is a bit different. People get into uh, management position, as you was mentioning, you know, you know, someone left, you got straight into it without even probably having the proper approach right at that point. You probably didn't expect it and you just get you know, over you kind of jump over a few steps, mm-hmm. I guess. Yes. So you get into a position where you don't know exactly how to work with people. Probably that's what it is. So would you say that something like courses for managers or something you know for preparing them to be a bit more ready f- to have conversations with with employees is something needed? Exactly. Um, for me, when I was a manager, I am guilty. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I must say. I was never being paying attention to uh, what the stuff goes through. And for me, that was that was not a good thing. But, and, yeah, but then you were thrown into a situation you're probably not, not quite ready for it as well. So. Exactly, exactly. So that's why I'm saying like um, a proper personal journey, interpersonal journey, it's more it's more likely to make you know the current management um, to have a different perspective at what the people might go through and how can they be able to help them rather than just going with it. Yeah, we are too too much kind of like drawn into our own work like and we don't see that people around us sometimes need help. That's definitely true. So for people that want to find more about yourself, get in touch, where do they find you? Are you happy to share anything? <laughs> you're not. You're not. Um, is, is it the right moment? Is it not? If let's say someone wants to, it's like, you know what? It was a good story. I want more information about this, anything. Um, where do they find you? I don't think it's quite the right moment. I'm not saying that being, you know, unrealistic. I'm, 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 I'm just not feeling it at this mm-hmm. moment i've i've started a, a facebook group for mental health acknowledgement uh, awareness um, you know for the people who are curious about it like myself who are passionate about it or who really wants to learn a little bit more um, but i've never made it public is it is still insecurity there? I guess it is. Right? It is indeed because so you're still I'm still working on it. It's not like it's it's a constant process. That's why I'm saying it's not a linear process. And there's days in my life where uh, I feel confident, and there's days in my life where I'm insecure, and I'm like, what am I doing here? Why do I do? Even became before I came here, I told you I'm um, I'm not insecure. I'm just you know feel the responsibility of people hearing sort some sort of information and you know uh, it might be someone's beginning or you know might be a deal breaker for others 
So I'm I'm not quite there yet. Not but quite public. Exactly, exactly. And and I'd like to take my time to build myself first. Wait for the right moment. Exactly. exactly. Well that's absolutely fine. I don't see anything wrong with but that. I'm totally open to make new connections at all times. So by all means if um, anyone wants to get in contact, I don't know, simply just come into your um, to your videos and you know I'll gladly respond and I'm not here in the position of uh, an expert. I'm, I, I've yeah. just shared whatever I've shared from my own personal experience and from my own learnings. And I'm not going to pretend I'm something that I'm not. When you know best, you know, how you live these uh, experiences and went through it. So whether right or wrong, it's exactly. your story. Exactly, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly that. Listen, Chris, it was an absolutely amazing podcast. I like it. It was a different perspective. I'm sure we'll do more in the future when you launch the group, you'll jump into maybe creating page, getting more people, you know. Yeah, I'm actually looking forward to not only open the group, but start, you know, a um, a coaching program. And that's actually my next step. And um, from there, we'll see where it takes us. You, you never know. Jay Shetty is just around the corner. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So I, I'm sure, like, I'm sure, because it's such a different angle, you know, from what I'm doing, probably from all the other episodes, definitely from all the other episodes. Uh, I'm sure we'll do more in the future because uh, there are people that actually need help, you know. I might not be one of them now. Who knows? Maybe one day I will. You never really know. But yeah, I think even if, you, as you said, even if you influence one person, that's that's fine you know exactly. you don't need to get to hundreds of thousands as long as, as long as one person gets something out of this i'm happy and i'm sure you are as well i am indeed exactly <laughs> and uh, if there's a uh, one thing i want to let um, leave you with is um not for your audience only but for yourself as well there's this quote from jim Rohn who says um stand guard at at the door of your mind and napoleon hill says uh, you become what you think about all day long. And that, for me, was like, what am I thinking about now? Nothing. What am I becoming? Nothing. <laughs> so then again, I started to look into my own thoughts and create my own, you know, future rather than think in the past, where thinking in the past brings all these emotions and you, you're basically trapped in the past by thinking right now about the past instead of you creating your own future thinking about your own future so stand guard of your um at the door of your mind and you become what you think you are <laughs> absolutely a pleasure and i'm sure we'll do Thank more you. in the future as soon as you launch your your stuff and you want to be more like probably not necessarily confident because I, I i'm sure like you, you're getting there it's just more of a like Making sure that he's in the, the knowledge in, in the right moment, I guess. Uh, we'll do more of this. Thank of course. You. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs>